Um, hello, everybody. Again, welcome. I'm Anna Johnson. I'm with the Center for Rural Affairs. And today we're going to be talking about insurance options for fruit and nut orchards. Um, and yes, please, please, um, please jump in with any questions at any time. Um, Center for Rural Affairs, a little background on us. We are a nonprofit organization. Uh, our headquarters is in eastern Nebraska, and we have an office in central Iowa where I'm located. So if you're ever coming through Nevada, Iowa, please stop by. We exist to create vibrant rural communities, and we do this through three key strategies, um, small business training and lending, working with communities and farmers and ranchers, and then also policy change. And we believe um, that no matter where you live, you ought to have access to opportunities. So for farmers and ranchers, um, strong risk management opportunities are an important piece of um, farm and ranch viability. So that's why we're doing um, this project on crop insurance. So a quick reminder that we have an upcoming webinar tomorrow um, on insurance option for small grains, uh, which is um, going to be similar to this one, but have a little bit more small grains focus. And then we're going to have our previous webinars posted on our website. And you can register at cfra.org slash events, which I um, assume everybody who's watching now was able to um, able to register through that. So, um, but before we dive on into the bulk of this, um, I was hoping we could do a quick poll just to get a sense of who is on the call. So if you don't mind indulging me really briefly, um, I'm interested in, um, hearing um, your background in farming and ranching. So if you just take a, a second to um, um, click which one of these options applies to you best, um, just give it a moment or two. Thank you everybody for, for indulging me in clicking. I'll just give another, you know, another couple seconds. Awesome, great. Okay, well, thank you. So we've got kind of um, a diversity in our um, in our our audience here, and then also I'm interested in learning um, your background in crop insurance as well. So have you purchased it before, um, or not, um, or if, whether or not you have um, crops and livestock to cover? So another another real quick poll here. Don't you don't mind indulging me once once more should be pretty quick and painless okay great well thank you so much thanks everybody for for working on those polls let me just double check that you can see my screen again excellent okay we will keep going um, so, so it sounds like we've got some, um, different backgrounds in, in folks who bought crop insurance before and who are currently, you know, currently raising, um, crops or livestock. So, um, to go over our goals for today, um, we're talking about, um, an insurance option for fruit and nut orchards called whole farm revenue protection. So we'll go over kind of what that is and how it, um, works for fruit and nut producers. And then, um, we'll also have a um, some points about how to figure out whether or not it'd be right for your operation. So um, I've generally divided the presentation into kind of two pieces. One is to go over the basics of, of whole farm revenue protection and um, and how it applies for fruit and nut orchards and then um, and then talk more about kind of how the enrollment process works because I find that that's you know an important part of making the decision of whether you want to buy it is figuring out like how much work it's gonna gonna take you on um, on your side. So so diving on in, uh, what is crop insurance and why do we buy it? Um, so for some broader context, just really briefly, um, crop insurance is insurance against farm loss and it's a risk management tool as we know that uh, farming and ranching has a lot of risk associated with it. Um, there's various different sources of that risk, um, sometimes from weather, from markets, there are other types of risk um, around uh, labor and liability. Um, crop insurance is um, exists to manage some of the risk, specifically risk associated with yield loss due to weather and price declines in, with some um, crop insurance options. Um, they'll address price declines also. So um, buying crop insurance um, ensures some protection against that, against those potential losses. Orchard operations obviously have um, a 
unique set of risk that um, that you all face. Um, there's spring freezes, there's um, big summer storms, big autumn storms, there's hail, um, and then markets are also uh, an important piece of, of um, orchard production as well. So the crop insurance options available for individual orchard crops, they exist for some areas um, to protect from unavoidable natural causes, which I'll get into a little bit more in a minute. Um, the crop insurance broader system, however, the five crops that are covered the most, as you might know, are corn, soybeans, rice, cotton, and wheat. Um, and, and in order to offer that, in order to offer crop insurance, crop insurance companies have to have a fair amount of um, production and like price history data to um, to build their build their actuarial tables to look at their um, you know make their estimates of how risky a certain crop is and then offer policies. Um, well, offer crop insurance policies, and often this information has to be location specific. Um, so, so they're relying, you know, they have a lot of data on corn from a particular area, so they're able to offer pretty robust corn insurance options. But if you are um, raising fruit and nuts, um, and in an area where they're not particularly common, um, it is much harder, as I'm sure you know, to get crop insurance. Um, which is too bad because, as we know, fruit and nut production is, um, you know, 16% of the total value of um, agricultural crop production in the U.S. And um, if you're looking at organics as well, fruit and nuts are a third of the value of organic crop production, but individual coverage for each of those, so like a, you know, apple-specific policy or pecan-specific policy, is only available for about half of all fruit and tree nuts. So probably not news to anybody who's listening in, but it's good to, good to kind of set the scene. So, you know, what, what insurance options actually exist for, for um, orchardists? This is a list of policies that exist in the U.S. Um, almonds, apples, cherries, apricots, peaches, pecans. However, when you dive in um, and look at what's available in the Midwest, where we're located, um, as I mentioned, we, you know, Center for World Affairs, we're in Nebraska and Iowa. Um, Iowa, the only um, um, orchard policy that I could find that's available is for apples, and it's only available in three of the 99 counties in Iowa, Green, Johnson, and Tama. And in Nebraska, it's even more limited. There's there's a individual grape policy available, but that doesn't that doesn't cover you know most other fruit and tree nuts. So, so, <laughs> which brings us to the um, main topic of the presentation is whole farm revenue protection, which is a crop insurance um, policy that is. Um, designed to offer protection for crops and livestock where there isn't otherwise an individual um, policy available. So a quick note on jargon because I do a lot of work in policy and um, and we are we are really good at jargon. <laughs> um, um, whole farm revenue protection is the the name of the crop insurance policy. I'll also call it whole farm in this presentation, and then the abbreviation for it is WFRP. So those all mean the same thing. Just want to make sure I made that super clear. Um, so, as I mentioned, oh, that's no, I'm not too far. Um, Whole Farm is crop insurance product for diverse operations, and um, it's a revenue insurance product, which means, which is an important point. Um, what that means is it covers your revenue for the year, not your yields. So, you'll file your claim and receive an indemnity when your revenue is lower than expected, um, whereas other, other insurance products that you might have heard of or, or have worked with um, are, are for yields. So um, if you have any questions about that, um, feel free to chime in. And I'm just gonna quickly double check that we've got, I'm keep staying on top of, staying on top of all the questions that are coming in. I think so, okay, cool. Um, again, just feel free to, um, I think everybody should have the power to unmute yourselves. And um, if you're in a situation where it's hard to like figure out the interface for this webinar, for go-to webinars, um, there's also a chat box and a questions box. So just feel free to drop questions on in there anytime. Okay, so um, so going back to you know what is Whole Farm? Um, this is the going back to the third point on this slide. If you're able to see the slides, generally. Um, we use the last five years of your revenue history to calculate your expected revenue for the coming year. Um, if you have a loss and your revenue takes enough of a hit, your whole farm will kick in. So just again, this is kind of how the broad overview of how whole farm will help protect you. It looks at your last five years of revenue. You estimate your next year's revenue. If it's lower than you expect, then you file your indemnity. Um, so whole farm again is a it's an annual crop insurance product like like other crop insurance. So it you you purchase it every year and it covers you for the year. 
Okay, next slide. So, and since Whole Farm, um, because it allows you to ensure your total revenue, that means you can cover a wide variety of crops and livestock um, in that that contribute to that revenue. Um, so even if there's not a specific policy for a particular crop or animal, you can purchase Whole Farm and it will cover it. So um, some specifics for how this works for um, fruit and nut orchards, some, some you know useful points. Whole Farm can accommodate pick your own prices, which I know are different than wholesale prices. Um, so that's, that's an, and also is a, has a really big impact on ultimate revenue. So um, the, the point about that though, is that it requires detailed record keeping on sales and prices to, to make that work. Um, another interesting fact on, about Whole Farm is that apples were the top crop insured by Whole Farm in, um, between 2015 and 2017, and they accounted for 25% of all revenue covered. So it's a really, really popular with apple growers, um, mostly in the um, Pacific Northwest in the U.S., but but um, we'll get, get, come back to that more in a little bit. So, you know, how what does Whole Farm cover? The value in crops and livestock that you produce during the coverage period, um, which as I mentioned, which is one year. So again, that's that's the value that you are producing in one year. So that does not include the value that already exists, existed before the coverage year. Um, it's, it's covering that like difference in value that you have created in that one year, the increase in value in your crops and livestock. Um, um, it also can, um, it also can accommodate the higher value of organic crops, which is also helpful. Um, so, you know, looking at that at that point that it covers the value that you increase during that year. So it will cover products that you produce during the insurance period, whether or not they're sold. Um, it will also cover commodities that you buy for resale. Um, and it, and then also if you have a, you know, diverse operation, here's some points of things, some things that it will not cover, which are just helpful to have all farm commodities, except for timber, forest and forest products, animals for sports or pets. Um, and then also starting in 2020, Whole Farm will cover hemp in select areas. And you need to talk to an agent to learn more about that. Um, another point that's, that's important for um, orchard folks to know is that Whole Farm does not cover um, value add products. So this is the canning, freezing, processing. Um, so you have to, you know, parse out um, when you're when you're calculating your estimated revenue for the next year, and um, looking at all of your all of your operations, you have to split out the value add um, activity. So if you're turning your apples into applesauce, um, you have to you're covering Whole Farm will cover the value of the apples, but it will not cover the increased value of the applesauce. So that's an important point. So. Um, what kind of loss will Whole Farm help me with? Um, it will cover a loss in revenue due to unavoidable natural causes that occur during the insurance period. Um, so that includes a decline in market price um, unless USDA determines otherwise. So you know, again, revenue. So, so just to parse this a little bit more. So this is not, again, liability insurance. This is about unavoidable natural causes. This is hail and insects. It's not um, and unfortunately, pesticide, pesticide drift is not covered. Um, other like um, things that humans cause are not covered. Um, again, un unavoidable natural causes. Okay, so talked a lot about Whole Farm and kind of all these different um, details to it. But if you're thinking of buying it, it's important to know if you're eligible. And this, these are the eligibility requirements. You have to be eligible to receive federal benefits. You have to be a U.S. citizen or resident. And then you have to have Schedule F tax rec records for the last five years. Um, if you're a beginning, far that, beginning farmer, that's only three years. Um, uh, but this is, you know, again, because you're ensuring your revenue for the expected for the upcoming year. They want to look at your revenue for the last five years to see, um, to, you know, to estimate what your expected revenue will be. So Schedule F tax records is how that works. There are, um, there's other documentation that might be acceptable, but you have to check with your agent um, to figure out, you know, what, what they'll accept there. And I'll talk about agents in a minute also. Um, and so then another important question to be thinking about if you're going to buy Whole Farm for your operation is, would Whole Farm cover my operations level of revenue? Whole Farm will cover up to $8.5 million in insured revenue. And that, that, um, that term insured revenue is um, something that you calculate based on the coverage level that you choose under the crop insurance policy. Um, but it gives you, you know, 
that's a, a detail you'll work out with your agent, but that kind of gives you a ballpark um, up to 8.5 million. Um, and then th this is this is actually new for this year. Um, Whole Farm will cover up to $2 million in revenue from animals and animal products, and also up to $2 million in greenhouse and nursery revenue. So that might, might be relevant for you if you have animals or um, greenhouse and nursery revenue. And then um, I mentioned earlier, that that's where it is. I mentioned earlier, um, do you purchase commodities for resale? It'll cover up to 50% of total, total revenue from them. So that's an important point too. Um, so one thing that um, orchard folks often say to me is, you know, what if I'm planning on planting new trees and I'm planning to grow my operation and so my revenue is expected, you know, or I planted trees five years ago and they're going to start produce, producing this year, you know, my, my revenue is expected to jump this coming year and my last five years aren't going to be, um, you know, really indicative of um, of what my expected revenue revenue is for this year. So um, Whole Farm has a um, provision built into it that will allow you to still cover um, still cover based on your expected growth. So they have it's like it's called like a um, growth index that you build into your policy. And so you talk to your agent to kind of figure out um, what uh, you know what the the expected growth that you're that of your operation and and how that growth index applies to your policy. Um, so that's that's an important important thing to to remember and talk through. And then um, another really helpful um, change that's new for this whole farm in 2020 is that um, another thing that folks will ask is say you know I look at my last five years of revenue and I had a really bad year two years ago and so my revenue was really low. Um, so if we're going to take an average of the last five years um, and use that as my expected revenue for the upcoming year, it's going to be just too low. And it's like, uh, <laughs> we want this policy to work. So new in 2020, you can now drop the head lowest, um, lowest revenue year out of, um, out of the last five years to calculate your average and, and your expected revenue. So that's pretty cool. Um, some of the orchard folks I talk to um, often have um, corn and bean land. Um, and so, you know, folks, and, and therefore, are, you know, often sometimes familiar with um, insurance for corn and soybeans. Um, an important point that is that Whole Farm can be combined with other crop insurance products. You don't have to just buy Whole Farm. And, um, and there's, and so, so talk to your agent to figure out how that, how that might work. But, but what you do is you, you stack it on top of your um, corn and bean policies. And then, and then, you know, if you file a claim, this is getting a little bit in the weeds, but if you file a claim on your corn and you receive a payment for that, an indemnity payment, then, um, then that'll just, um, then, then that gets incorporated into the, the, you know, your revenue calculations under your whole farm policy. So they've got, um, Basically, what I'm trying to say there is they've got provisions in place so you're not getting, um, you know, double double paid for the same loss under the whole farm because they want to make sure that you can combine the whole farm coverage with your other um, other corn and soybean insurance. Okay, so this is giving you some basics of overview of whole farm, um, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about the enrollment process. A lot of the fruit and nut orchard folks that I talk to um, haven't purchased crop insurance before, obviously because it's not. Um, super available for them. Um, so, so there's, um, it's, I find it really helpful to kind of get a sense of what the actual process is like for purchasing crop insurance. So that's what I'm going to talk about next. As soon as I find my mouse, there it is. Okay. So here's the basic overview of the process. Um, first, you got to find an agent, a crop insurance agent. Um, I'm going to talk through these steps um, individually a little bit later, but this is the kind of beginning to end how the cycle works. So you find your agent, um, you work with them to gather needed records, to estimate your upcoming revenue, and you select a coverage level. And then you kind of sign your policy documents, um, and you got to do that by March 15th. Um, commit to purchasing a, if you're going to buy, you got to commit to it by March 15th um, for, for our area, for Iowa and Nebraska. Um, the date can vary based on where you are in the country. So check with your agent. Um, and then after that, um, as the season kind of really gets going, there's um, some reporting requirements during the season to document your actual production. And also you have to pay your bill, um, pay your premium bill for your crop insurance policy. Then, you know, fingers crossed, you don't have a loss and you're free and clear. Um, but if you do experience a loss during the season, you want to, you have to document it immediately um, and, and file, a, file some paperwork with your agent. Um, and, but then at the end of the year, um, again, because this is a revenue policy and you're looking at how much your revenue was impacted, at the end of the year when, um, is when you calculate how much your revenue was for the year, obviously. And um, if it was lower than you expected based on that loss, then you file your claim. So I will talk through each of these steps now. 
And also, hold on just a moment. I'll double check and make sure that I don't have any questions. And I'm sorry if, if somebody's had their hand up or something and I missed you. Okay, okay, I'm going to keep going. Um, but, but again, just feel free to um, unmute yourselves, jump in, um, all that jazz. Um, okay, so step one, find an agent. How do you do that? So to purchase crop insurance, you need a crop insurance agent. Um, there are a couple different ways to find an agent. Um, one is to ask your friends and your network for recommendations for who they work with and who they know. There's actually not a requirement that an agent be located near you in order to work with you. I met somebody in North Carolina who uses an agent in Idaho. So, um, so just be, be, be aware of that. Um, face to face meetings have their benefits, um, of course, but, but, um, you know, look around, talk, um, you want, you want to find somebody you're, you're comfortable working with and that you trust. Um, RMA, um, which is the USDA agency that handles crop insurance. Um, there's a, there's a online, basically an online phone book, an online listing of all crop insurance agents who are certified in, in the country. And, um, and you, and so if you Google, um, the agent locator tool, you will find that and you can look up, you know, who's in your area or in another area. Um, all crop insurance agents are required to offer whole farm revenue protection, but some have sold more policies at this point than others. So um, if you're interested in kind of really getting into the weeds, you might want to look for an agent who has sold more policies of whole farm than others. And that, you know, it just requires, um, you know, digging around, doing the research. So um, I've got this last point to start working on this today, um, just because, you know, I'm, I'm giving this presentation on what, December 11th. And um, the the insurance filing deadline is March fifteenth, and that sounds like it kind of sounds like it's a long way away, but um, but you know that initial the initial enrollment in Whole Farm, um, you know you know the learning curve of, of figuring out kind of what paperwork and documentation is needed, um, building that relationship with an agent, all of that um, takes a fair amount of time to get going at the beginning. So if you, you um, it's really it's really good if you can start working on that um, as early as possible. And you, and even if your, um, you know, your Schedule F obviously isn't ready yet for for 2019, but um, but you can still be reaching out to agents and kind of get names and numbers and start setting setting times to to meet. So yeah, I really recommend starting working on this today if you're trying to um, purchase Whole Farm for your operation for next year. Okay, um, advancing slides. There we go. <laughs> um, so after you find your agent, then you meet with them. Um, and, and you talk to them about what your expected revenue will be for the next year. So I mentioned earlier that you, um, that, that you need to have Schedule F tax records. Um, um, this is the, the Schedule F on, on tax forms is a pretty small, you know, form, um, but, but the, you may need to go over with your agent other records, which can include um, production records, price histories, invoices, inventory records, so that they can, um, you know, be assured that the like the estimate that you are that you that you land on for what your revenue will be for next year is um, is the is one that they're comfortable um, insuring. So, um, um, some folks out there obviously sell through direct markets and um, and having having records of the price and sales um, from farmers markets is uh, you know not something that everybody has who are who's selling at direct markets. So uh, there are forms available online uh, for for those of you who need to be keeping track of that um, in order to purchase a whole farm policy. So if you have questions about that, get in touch with us. Um, your agent should know about those also, but they're um, they're they're online. Just get in touch and we'll we'll send you the links. So then also while you're meeting with your agent, um, you know, in purchasing any crop insurance policy, you're deciding which um, you know, which coverage level do you want? So uh, in Whole Farm, there is 50% to 85% coverage level available. So 50% is if you experience a loss that brings your approved revenue down by 50% for the year you file your claim. For 85% coverage, it's if, if you experience a loss that brings your approved revenue down below 15%, um, then you file your claim. So um, a much, 85% is, is, you know, kicks in for a much, much bigger loss. Um, um, other crop insurance policies that are out there offer something called catastrophic coverage. You may have heard about that or maybe super familiar with that. Um, it's not available for whole farm. Um, so just FYI. 
And also, if you um, are going to, I mentioned earlier, the buy-up option, if you're going to be purchasing, you know, corn and bean policies for other, your corn and bean acres, um, but are going to purchase whole farm to go on top of that to cover, you know, your pick-your-own-apple orchard, you you know, this is when you figure that out, too, and, and do that, um, and stack your policies, um, do that, do that whole farm buy-up option. And it's, uh, and just go up, just one more thing on that buy-up option, it's, even if you, um, it sounds like purchasing more crop insurance, but it's worth running it by, if you're already buying, buying your corn and bean policies, it's worth running by a whole farm scenario to add in that extra crop with your agent because um, sometimes it can, the combination of them, I've heard anecdotally that it will lower, um, lower total premium. So um, it's definitely worth pricing out with your agent. So speaking of price, good segue. Um, there's a tool online if you you know if you have some some slow days and you're in front of your computer and want to kind of just play around and see if um, how much whole farm is going to actually cost you to purchase um, there's a tool if you google rma cost estimator tool um, they they have a tool uh you know it's an online tool where you enter in um, some of the you know the parameters for what you you know what what um what revenue you would be covering under whole farm and then it will um, you know, spit back at you some calculations of how much your premium would be, how much you, you would be paying. And we will put all, we'll be posting this video online later and we'll have um, all these links in the description. So, um, and we'll follow up with them as well. But yeah, again, RMA cost estimator tool is what it's called if you want to just Google it um, right now. Um, another important point for, for those of you who haven't purchased crop insurance before, something to know is that um, the total bill, uh, a chunk of it is covered um, by federal subsidies. Um, so what you'll, what you'll see is um, in the cost estimator tool particularly, it'll say, you know, your bill would, may, would be, you know, your bill to purchase your whole farm policy would be $2,000 and the federal government will cover $1,500 and you're responsible for $500. So, um, so that's just an important thing to know. It's, it's, um, it's subsidized. And also um, another really helpful thing about um, Whole Farm is that your, um, your premium will also decrease if you are insuring more crops. So it's rewarding diversity. And, um, and this is up to three crops. So if you are only insuring one policy with Whole Farm, um, you receive a slightly lower subsidy and then um, two crops, it's slightly higher, and then three or more crops, um, you're eligible for the highest level of substandard whole farm. So that's pretty cool. Um, so maybe maybe that's really, you know, that could be really appealing for, you know, those of you who have kind of a couple of field crops and then, you know, maybe maybe one or two orchard crops could be really, could be really helpful. Okay, so so back to that process of enrolling. So we talked about how to find an agent. We talked about some of the things you discuss with your agent to purchase your policy. Um, then once you've settled on a coverage level and you and your agent agree on what your expected revenue is for the next year, um, then you finalize your documentation with them. And again, you got to complete that paperwork by March 15th. And just another plug to start working on it now. Um, and um, also you want to work with your agent to identify what record keeping and reporting is needed throughout the year. Most crop insurance policies require mid-year cropping reports. Whole Farm also requires a mid-year revenue report. Um, so, so make sure you know what that is going in. Um, and then there's also a final, again, both, both kinds of policies require some kind of final report. So um, know what those is, know what those are. Also on the front end, when talking to your agents, it's a good idea to um, get a really clear sense from them um, what to do if you uh, if you have a loss. You want to you want to know that beforehand. You don't want to be scrambling when a loss happens to figure out what kind of documentation you are going to need. So um, um, the basics of it are that if you see that you um, had a loss of some kind that you expect might hit your revenue for the for the year overall, um, the you know, the minute you see the loss, within 72 hours of discovering it, um, you submit a, a, something called a notice of loss to your insurance agent. So that's to that's to flag for them. I experienced a loss. We're going to have to revisit this later when we when we finish up finish up this policy. So then you, um, because again, this is ensuring your revenue for the year. Um, when you and you you know finalize, figure out your final revenue for the year when you do your taxes. Um, so when you file your taxes at the end of the year. Then once you have that documentation available, you send that Schedule F to your agent um, and file your, and, and that's when you file the claim, the full claim. 
and you need to file that claim within 60 days after submitting your tax form to the IRS. So this is, you know, depending on how um, how early you get your taxes done the following year. You know, it's done, you know, in you know January, February, March, um, and then you work with your agent to process that claim. And so they'll, you know, they'll submit that to their their crop insurance company that they um, underwrite for, and um, and then come back and um, come back to you with an indemnity. So. Um, that is the that is the content. So again, the goals for today were to go over what is Whole Farm, and how does Whole Farm work for fruit and nut producers, and would it be right for your operation? Um, so I hope that um, I've helped answer those questions for you even a little bit. I know half an hour is not very long, and this is a complicated complicated policy, but um, hope I hope you understand it a little bit better now. And again, just gonna really you know lay into this one. Um, um, be sure to reach out to an agent as soon as possible. So this is the, again, it's the agent locator tool. Um, just start start reaching out now. Okay, so that is the end of the content. Um, we're gonna send an email survey. It should come to your inboxes tomorrow. Please, we'd really appreciate it if you fill that out. And thank you again for filling out the poll earlier. And again, if you have any questions about crop insurance, you know, now or later, um, please reach out to us at um, the Center for Rural Affairs. This is my email. And, um, and we'll be posting this webinar online so you can watch it again um, and, and share with all your friends. So um, with that, we'll um, I'll stop talking. And if you have any questions, please just please just chime in.